Hey, what is up guys? I'm Kyle at Fortune and today we're checking out some shop upgrades for our Harbor Freight 20 ton press. Oh. The 20 ton press from Harbor Freight has got to be one of the most popular presses, at least in the United States, because it's so affordable. And it's one of those tools that you really need to have in your garage if you're gonna be working on trucks yourself, especially if you're gonna be rebuilding transfer cases, transmissions, axles, anything like that. There's a lot of times when having that press comes in handy. If you have the Harbor Freight press, then you know, Having that jack going up and down all day, it just takes forever. It starts wearing you out. You get the weird cramp in your shoulder. So we've got some upgrades that we're gonna put on them. Both of these I got a super long time ago. I just haven't had the time to really mess around with them. And I haven't really had to use the press for too much lately, but we're putting them on in this video. Now I say shop, like we're putting upgrades into our shop, but really it's just my two car garage. I have a ton of stuff in here and it's a, a little room. So thank God I've got the Samurai that can fit and I can still work around it. But off in one of the sides, we do have a 20 ton press and there's two things that I wanna do to it. One, I wanna hook that press up to an air jack. That way I can use the compressor to just press down on the lever and have it push the press down on its own. That's gonna save me that arm workout and I think it's a little bit more precise of a way to press things down. So that is not too complicated of a process. Basically you have to take the old jack off of there and then weld on a new one. The next thing I wanna do is put a brake on there. Basically I want a way to bend metal using my press so when I start fabricating more parts I don't have to just cut them and weld them together I can just get bends out of things I think that looks a lot better a lot of the time and then it also saves on material because you're not having to cut you're not having to weld so those are two things I'm really looking forward to and that's what we're going to check out in this video so check it out the garage is thrashed like it always is here is a look at our harbor freight 20 ton shop press this is it pretty much in the original form but what we're going to do today is take whoa speed racer we are going to take this bottle jack out this is a pump style with the lever and we're going to replace it with the air version that a lot of people have done before and that's going to help us get ready for our other modifications we're going to make down here Right away you can see that this jack is much bigger than this other one, especially the mounting base on the bottom. This one's almost twice as wide. It's got this huge part sticking off to the side there. Definitely isn't gonna be plug and play. We're gonna have to modify it somehow to get this to fit where this one used to be. So we've got it pretty much parallel with this edge and then this edge is flush both in the front and back So what we've got to work with now is Welding this edge right here this edge right here So I, I think that's gonna work for me one of the focus areas I had is making sure it is centered side to side and front to back So this is just getting a straight down push when it's going to press we've got some alignment marks here here and then we just got the black line there where we're gonna need to grind this all down before we weld it and it's got the same thing on the other side. All right, a couple of tack welds on there to hold her on. And we're gonna see if everything's lined up and if this is gonna move down on the right track and not bind up anywhere or mess up the springs. All right, we've got everything welded up and put back in place. It's actually a bit harder when this is welded because you can't assemble it and then slide the jack in like I was. Instead, you've got to have somebody else hold this thing up and then you can hook these outboard springs on there. Uh, there's the weld right there. Literally the third blast off of my welder. Had two test runs and then did that. Just sprayed some paint on there real quick. This is Rust-Oleum hammered silver. I think it looks pretty good. Got her hooked up to the air compressor. And she works as advertised.
Now we'll put the guide rod down in there. We've got to press this in about an eighth inch or halfway through the base. Tap it just to get it started. All right, now we've got to weld this up in there, but first we're gonna put a square to it, make sure this thing's standing up straight. These are what are gonna be sliding up and down that rail that we just put on the base. So we're gonna throw some tacks on them, make sure that they're square and they do go up and down the base smoothly. If they're good, we'll weld them all the way up. Next thing we need to do is put through two of our carriage bolts. After this step, we're gonna be putting our angle iron in here. And because of that, we're not gonna be able to access these, so we're gonna to need to tack these in there so they don't spin around. Next step is to put our angle iron in there. I think for a lot of people, this doesn't sit flat in there, so they end up taking the angle grinder and welding down this part so it sits flat on the bottom. So far for me, mine seems like it's sitting pretty flush, so I don't think I'm gonna need to do that. This is actually flipped around backwards. This is the backstop right here. So after you loosen this up, you can set how far you want your metal to go in there before it stops and hits this. That way you can do the you know same thing over and over again and get a consistent bend. So this will actually be flipped around when I'm done. I'm just kind of making sure everything's lining up and working. I still need to weld on my little collar right here that clamps onto this cylinder. So even though this isn't put together all the way, we're gonna try a little test bend and just see how everything's working on here. So I had a little bit more to go, but I'm gonna see how that goes. I wanna see if it's actually going past 90 or if it's right at 90. Oh yeah, I think it went way past 90. It's pretty good though. Bent it pretty square for having just, you know, eyeballed it. There we go. Not bad, that one closer to 90. I'm not sure how close it is. Let's see, kinda of hard to get the square in there, but. That's pretty dang close. Maybe off by, you know, less than half a degree. Pretty cool, man. Nice way to add some rigidity to pieces of metal or get different bends without having to cut and weld it back on. Pretty stoked about this. Well, this thing is fully seated in there. So what I'm going to do, I'm gonna have this cylinder contact the finger and then I'm just gonna tighten this on there and that'll be where it needs to sit. All right, we'll just throw two small welds, one here, one there. We should be all set. And the Allen back here. So here's the Lincoln with the new setup. We have uh, True MIG going now. We're running the 7525 on here and the welding has been much better, but we're still working out some kinks of the system. Um, I'm gonna say the welder, but really it's me. I've gotta figure out how to weld better with this setup. So this is like my test piece of metal where every time I change settings on the welder, I, I kind of test it out on here first. This is 3 16 and 3 16 It's just a bunch of leftover metal. So this part right here is all flux core. And I think it turned out really good. Um, for me, that's like a pretty decent weld. Then when I switched over to the MIG with the gas, we started doing this. So this is literally the first bead I ever put out with the, the MIG. And I was like, hey, this looks pretty good. Um, it was a little built up. I figured I needed to go a little bit faster. And as I went around, it just seemed like it was getting better and better. Finally, I ended up here and I'm like, all right, well, let's try this other piece here. Uh, after tweaking a little bit, we started out right there. Then this one was a little bit better than all of a sudden this one was really piling it up again. And then this, I liked this one. I liked how this one looked. It looked like it was good penetration. And then um, 
tweaking it a little bit more, got that. So that's all the stuff we had going. Then when I thought I had it dialed in, I started welding our new uh, brake kit together. And you know, I'm just not happy with these welds at all. Um, very inconsistent too. Like this one's like super thin. Um, these ones are a little bit wider and flatter. You know, this, some of this is all right. I'm not too upset with. The other side looks better. I wish I could blame it on the welder, but I can't. Uh, there's not really any excuse, it's me. I've got to get more familiar with this style of welding and get a better pattern down. I've been trying the cursive E, but um, at the end, I started kind of doing one of the squiggly, um, like wave back and forth motions, and those ones looked a lot better. So um, these ones also really small, but they don't look too bad. I would like them to be a little bit wider. Not the end of the world. I'm probably gonna end up stacking some more metal in here to get a closer bend anyways, but overall, pretty stoked about how this came out and we've got some cool stuff that we're gonna make with this. So you can see I've got all these boxes behind me. We're getting ready to send out all of the uh, giveaway winners. So my garage is just a mess as always. Gotta get this stuff shipped out. Hope you guys enjoy your prizes. Those are coming out soon to you. Overall, I'd say this is a pretty easy DIY project. Of course, you do need to have some metalworking skills with this, nothing crazy, but you are gonna need a welder or know somebody that knows how to weld. I'm a perfect example of, you don't have to be an expert welder to do this, but really looking forward to these two things. We've got a ton of stuff to build for the Samurai and uh, probably gonna start making some stuff for the Colorado too. We need some rock sliders and some additions to the bumper and also some brackets to hold different things like propane tank and whatnot. So stay tuned, check all that out. If you want to see these things as they unravel, make sure you subscribe. That's the easiest way to keep up with us. We also have an Instagram account, same name. If you want to check out any of the products, just look down in the description. I'll link as much stuff as I can for you guys. Thanks for watching. See you next time.